Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of Forever Young. I'm your host, David Linton, and today, as always, we are here to talk about life um, and how it affects those of us who are over 50. The name of the program is Forever Young because that is true. You are forever young. It's all about your mind because age is nothing but a number. And of course, each week I'm happy to share this beautiful platform with two beautiful ladies who make this show what it is. And again, I get to be that only guy with these two lovely ladies. And you know, that's good for a guy's ego when you get over 50. So of course, I'm talking about Miss Jean Hendricks. We call her beautiful. And welcome to the show, Jean. Thank you, David. And as always, I'm delighted to share this post with you. Back to you. And then, of course, our other beautiful co-host is Dr. Sharon Mitchell. She kind of makes things happen all behind the scenes. She's on front of the camera and behind the camera. We couldn't do this show without her. And that's Dr. Sharon Mitchell. Welcome to the show, Sharon. Thank you, David. And it's always a pleasure to share this platform with you and Miss Jean. We've got some good stuff for, it, for you today. Thank you for having me. You know, you're absolutely right. We do have some great stuff today. And you know, what we're talking about today is something that's really important for everybody. I think everybody has been dealing with, um, you know, COVID, um, you know, mental health is something that we don't talk about a lot in our communities. Um, and it affects all ages. You know, we're looking at things about, you know, kids are having stress problems. We're talking about elderly people. And of course, obviously, one of the things that COVID has, has shown us um, is that you may love the person you live with, but do you really like them? <laughs> and how do you handle that? So um, we're going to talk about that. And we've got a great guest to get into some of those things. But of course, before we can do that, we know that Jean has something that sets the stage for our, our topic today. So Jean, what pearl do you have for us today? Thank you, David. Today I found a topic entitled Dare to Self-Care. Speak kindly to your inner self. Don't take your demon's view. You are you and no one else will lead the life you do. Kill your inner critic and, and balance all of his chatter. Silence all of his chatter. Then write this truth inside your brain. I'm worth it and I matter. Back to you, David. Well, that's true. You matter, we matter. Last week we talked about affirmations and self-affirmations. Well, today we have someone who's gonna to talk to us about self-care and helping you to create your best self. And I'm talking about Reverend uh, Yolanda Seal Stewart. She's a native of New Orleans, uh, Louisiana, and she's been a psychotherapist for the last 20 years. She's the chief executive officer at Alliant Behavioral Health LLC in Marietta, and she's also the director of Project Growth Initiative, a nonprofit arm of the company. She's fully licensed as a psychotherapist, trauma specialist, and certified professional counseling supervisor, and she's been in practice since 2005 here in the Atlanta metro area. She's also the former clinical director and trainer of Behavioral Health Links, um, Georgia Crisis Access Line for Suicide, and a former FEMA crisis intervention contractor for evacuees of Hurricane Katrina. And she's also worked discreetly uh, with various professional athletes in both the NBA and NFL as and several other celebrities. Because people think the celebrities have it all together, but they really don't. They, like everybody else, have those challenges. And so she has 23 years of experience in grant writing proposals for various programs including the Catholic Charities Archdiocese of New Orleans and the New Orleans Job Initiative Work Investment Act program. I could talk for hours about her credentials and her qualifications, but there's nothing better than having to bring her to the stage herself. And we'd like to welcome our Reverend Yolanda Seals Stewart. Welcome. Hi, how are you guys doing? We're it doing is a great. blessing so to good. be here. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. Well, no, thank you for being here to share this topic with us that's so important. Mm -hmm. And we're talking about mm -hmm. self-help and, and, you know, reading your bio, mm -hmm. you know, thing that stuck out when you said you worked with athletes and celebrities, because people think those people don't have, they got it all together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the Absolutely. end of the day, 
they are people just like us. Mm -hmm. And so to kick today's show off, um, Dr. Mitchell, uh, we're going to let Dr. Mitchell have the first <laughs> shot today and uh, find out, get us going today. All right. Thank you, David. So Reverend Stewart, uh, we, re we understand that you're the CEO of Project Growth mm -hmm. Initiative along with Alliant Behavior Health. Can you tell us about your organization? And, and yes, what of, it's course. Well? of course. Sure. Um, Alliant Behavior All Health right. is a behavior health private practice that has been in operation since 2006. And we provide behavior health counseling as well as support for the individual and the family. Uh, we serve as individuals with depression, anxiety, substance abuse, marital couple therapy. And we also um, serve as individuals with SMI, which is a serious mental illness such as um, bipolar, PTSD, and schizophrenia. Um, Project Growth Initiative is a nonprofit arm that was started 2005, right after Katrina, because what we noticed whenever I go home or whatever, I would go home to New Orleans, there was nothing for the kids to do. So uh, my former pastor back then, uh, my late pastor, he's now deceased, donated the building. And what we did, we started a program for kids to come and just be kids, um, providing games and support for them. And that has grown in the greater Atlanta area, as well as in the New Orleans area. We provide... Um, this is for kids with PTSD, adjustment disorder, depression, and anxiety. Mm -hmm. And we provide activities for them, self-esteem self building activities. Um, we also do tutoring, family support. And we have had the support of the NBA with basketball camps, the NFL with football camps, and various fraternities and mm -hmm. sororities over the years. Very good. Awesome. awesome. Thank you. Uh -huh. so, uh, you Dr. Yes, I have a question I'd like to ask. What is the mission or uh, vision of the Atlanta uh, Behavioral Health? What the is mission your vision? Of Behavior, the vision of Align Behavioral Health is to help those with emotional, those who are in emotional distress um, during a different difficult time. We provide comprehensive mental health treatment with a caring team of therapists, psych psychologists, <laughs> psychiatrists, nurse practitioners, mm -hmm. as well as caseworkers at time. Our goal is to one day open a minority owned African-American behavioral health hospital because there isn't one oh, okay. um, in operating, operating okay. in the United States. And right now we're on the path to do that. Good. Very good. Thank that's, you. That's great. Yeah. Now you said something in your, when you were answering um, Sharon's um, question talking about mm -hmm. your clientele i was going to ask you about who your clientele is mm -hmm. but you mentioned something very specific mm -hmm. when you talked about kids you know yes, and mm -hmm. you know today you know just just yesterday on the news we was talking i was looking at a story they were talking about kids being under stress because of covid and and how it's affecting yes. people mm -hmm. so how how do you handle a child in this situation versus an adult, How, what is the, the different dynamics and get those children because they're missing that interpersonal relationships in a lot of cases. Right, right. Not only is the child missing those interpersonal relationships in those cases, children are also going through what we call human growth and development stages. And when something traumatic like this interrupts that, it sets the child off. Um, for example, if they're at a stage in their life when they're trying to find out who they are and their own self-identity identity for example children who are in the middle in middle school or sixth grade or fifth grade if you're taking a, a, a project from them from being in school or, or taking them away from school you're taking away their social environment um, a lot of mm -hmm. children um turn to social media. I was sharing with Dr. Mitchell, a lot of children mm -hmm. turn to social media or their peers for validation a lot of times. And if you're taking the school away from them or you're taking their activities away from them and they turn into social media, if they post something and only get 10 likes, their whole world is destroyed because they only got 10 likes. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. when you taking away, taking a component away like that and having them depend socially, solely on social media, that's very detrimental for, to them. So in therapy, what we do, we help the child to, 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 look, to notice that they have strengths as well and help them with their own personal self-esteem so they're getting validation from within the house and not relying solely on the validation that they're getting from their peers, if that kind of makes sense. Wow. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let me ask you, first of all, let me ask you how you're doing as a therapist in this COVID environment. And then secondly, mm -hmm. how has COVID how you deliver your services to your clientele? 
Okay. Uh, we as a private practice are quite overwhelmed, believe it or not, uh, to the point that I had to increase my, increase my staff within the past two to three months. That's how overwhelmed we are um, and because of COVID. Uh, we are seeing an increase in domestic violence. That is, is prohibiting those who want to leave from leaving due to their jobs or school or school closures. Um, we're seeing an increase in child abuse as children are now homeschooled, which prohibits the teachers or social workers from noticing any type of abuse. Um, and abuse is easier to hide when the kids are at home. We're seeing an increase in suicidal ideation. For example, this week I had to put five, six, six patients. The sixth one was today. I had to put six patients in the hospital for care. Um, because those with serious mental illness, such as uh, bipolar and schizophrenia, they don't do well with isolation. So we are seeing an increase in individuals who are having suicidal ideation, panic attacks due to the isolation as well. We're seeing an enormous increase in depression with children and teens, as well as golden agers due to the isolation. Um, we're seeing an increase in negative coping skills, such as alcoholism, uh, substance abuse, um, believe it or not, and shopping online. Um, I was making a joke to my husband the other day. I said, I've never seen um, the Amazon truck, delivery truck so many times in our neighborhood delivering packages because people are using shopping as a coping mechanism because they can't get out. So those are some of the things that we're seeing and some of the um, the services that we're, de we're delivering to our clientele, such as the counseling, such as the substance abuse piece, getting them connected, um, as well as being a support for them during this time. Very good. Wow. So, so as a licensed therapist, we would like to discuss self-care for, for this particular segment. Uh, can you explain to us what self-care actually is? Self-care is taking the time out to focus on you and focus on the care for your psychological, emotional, physical, and spiritual needs. Self-care is, uh, is a practice of doing things to take care of your mind, your body, your soul, and engaging in activities that promote well-being and reduce stress. Um, it reminds yourself and others that your needs are a priority. Every person deserves to have a healthy relationship with others, but also you deserve to have a happy and, and healthy relationship with yourselves as well. Now, that's, uh, that's a mouthful. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. uh, Gene, I, I think you're muted. Okay, there you go. There you go, Gene. We couldn't hear you at first. Go ahead. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. I was going, I'm just asking, can you be specific about the kinds of activities we, those of us who are over 55 can do to keep our minds active? I mean, you, we're home now, so we, we're closed in. And there are some of us who don't, who live alone mm -hmm. and don't have transportation. I mean, what can we do to keep right. our minds alert? Well, there are several things. One, believe it or not, if you have a cell phone, there are some wonderful games that you can play. Um, for example, a lot of um, card games you can play either on your cell phone or the computer. There are also puzzles that you can do, crossword puzzles that you can do. Uh, Zoom. Uh, my mother, being transparent, my mother is 81 years old and she loves Zooming with the family as well as um, with the grandkids. Um, Making sure you connect with your friends, call and check up on your friends. Making sure that you are still engaged in activities. Uh, it's helpful that our church has online um, programs such as this, or have programs where we can watch church and do Bible study. But keeping yourself engaged, keeping yourself um, um, engaged and trying to find something new, learn, learn something new online. Um, um, what's the name of that? YouTube have a lot of, of self-help type of videos if there's something you want to learn new online. Um, my mother took a plan to get taught just by looking at, at a video online. So we try to help them, try to help people, um, we call them golden agers, to, to look at other things or ways that they can engage each other as well as keep their mind stimulated while they're isolated. Right. Okay. Very good. That's Thank good you. Stuff. Yeah, it is. It that is. really is. That is some good mm -hmm. stuff because, again, you know, we talk about the isolation and uh, talk yeah. about games mm -hmm. with uh, using people using their phones and technology mm -hmm. has really allowed everyone who thought technology was not for them to really embrace right. technology. Mm -hmm. And I think that's right. really mm -hmm. one of the things that's really been if they, you go always you're trying to find the silver lining in everything. And I think that silver mm -hmm. lining is that I know just yesterday um, my my nephew celebrated his 
his 12th birthday. And uh, we celebrate, we had a Zoom party. And um, mm-hmm. his grandmother, who is 70 plus, I won't say in case she ever sees this, <laughs> but she was, on, she, was on, she was on Zoom and she was just having a good time. And, and so yeah. it really is good about the connectivity. And like you said, Dr. Uh, Reverend Stewart, that we have these programs and anybody who's just tuning in, uh, this is Forever Young, a production of Hope TV, um, a program that's designed to help us understand that life over 50 um, is not the end of the world. Even if it's 60, 70, life is a state of mind. And today we have Reverend Yolanda Seal, Seal Stewart, who is talking to us about self-care. And she is the uh, CEO of uh, the Alliant Behavior Science and the CEO, should I say, of Power Gro- Project Growth Initiative. And so mm-hmm. what happens when we neglect our self-care? What happens to us if we just you know, don't do what we're supposed to do as you're advising us. Well, if you neglect your self-care, you there are a lot of things that happen. One, you become depressed. Two, mm-hmm. you become, um, you, you develop symptoms of anxiety. Um, you're not good for anyone else, nor are you good for yourself. Uh, you begin to see, we begin to see some other symptoms, like you might start having what we call somatic symptoms. Somatic symptoms are your stomach hurting for no reason, or your headache, you having a headache and the doctor can't find out what's going on, or you having these heart palpitations and you go to the doctor and the doctor say, oh, your heart is fine. When you neglect, neglect tech, caring for yourself, it begins to show when you do not take care of yourself at all. So that's why self-care is extremely important. Um, Self-care is extremely important for um, you to maintain your, your, your life balance. Um, self-care is important activity to do every day because it would help by doing so, it would help lead you toward a better balance among your dimensions of wellness and lead you toward improving overall health and wellness within yourself. Life is precious and it's meant to be, in, to be enjoyed. Um, I always share with people the scripture, you know, God said, let us make us, God said in our Genesis 126, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And God made us three different things, emotional beings, spiritual beings, and also on the seventh day he rested. So that's another part of self-care is making sure that you get enough rest and take really take care of yourself. Good. Yeah. So, so Reverend Stewart, I want to ask, since our audience is primarily over 50, we find ourselves in the role of being caregivers. Can you provide mm-hmm. us with what those caregiver traits are and how they affect our self-care? Sure. One of the traits is being selfless, <laughs> um, being seen as the strong one or the savior. And we can talk about that too as well. Um, patience, uh, compassion, attentiveness, dependability and trustworthy and those who are um who are caregivers we neglect our own self-care because we have all of these qualities and we want to give these qualities but we don't give those things to ourselves as well we're not we we don't even save ourselves one of the things i tell people you cannot be everything to everyone else and you can and be nothing to yourself you can't keep pouring out into people and no one pours into you so that's why self-care is is extremely important Wow. Would you, would, you su- would you suggest that a person who is providing self-care perhaps have a schedule for themselves so they can take a moment or take some time for themselves? Oh, yes. Um, absolutely. Absolutely. Put yeah. yourself first. Take care of you first. Um, being transparent, my husband, he doesn't. he's amazed at how I do it. Every morning, I work up at 5 o'clock. And about 5.30, I'm at a gym for an hour, hour and a half. So before I start my day, I take care of myself. I also have my devotionals in the morning time before I start my day. So I do that before I go to the gym and I do it again after I come from gym. But the morning time is for me before I get my day started. On on Sundays after church, I don't do anything. I don't see patients. I don't do anything with the house, anything, because that's that's my time for me. So putting yourself first, taking care of yourself is very, very important. You you know, that's, that's, that's very good. That, you know, that is really good because I think we get mm-hmm. caught up into like what you call the, or what is called the savior syndrome. Um, mm-hmm. And that savior syndrome, 
um, can be dangerous. And for for people who may not be familiar with that, how would you describe that savior syndrome? Uh, the savior syndrome <laughs> is sometimes called a savior complex or the white knight syndrome, the white knight syndrome. And um, this is the need to save people by fixing their problems. And sometimes when we are um, old, uh, called golden agers or we are parents or we're the oldest child or we're um, that person or we're the boss at, at work, we have the need to fix everyone's problem. And it only feels good it only feels good about yourself when you're helping someone, but you have to believe that helping others is, is um, you believe that helping others is your purpose, which is, is, is true. But however, you have to realize that there's a difference between helping others and serving others. And one of the things that I love about, uh, about um, uh, Dr. Dr. E. Dewey Smith, our pastor, is the fact he always pu pushing us to serve. Because when you're helping others, you're, your helping is based on inequality. For example, I'm the oldest child. And I was always told growing up or coming up as an oldest child, help your sister with her homework or help your brother with this. Help it. It's your job to help them. It's, it's always your job to help. And now to this day, even though that I am an adult, they still see me as the person not their equal because I'm the oldest. They, they look up to me as the person that they have to always come to for advice. Um, they see me as the same light that they see my mom and my mom is still alive. But when you are serving someone, you serve with your strength, you serve with yourself, you draw from all your other experiences when you're serving somebody. And it's a total difference between serving and helping somebody. When you're helping somebody, you're easily drained, you're easily depleted, you're easily uh, get you're easily get frustrated, and it shows an, e an inequality because that person is now seeing you as a greater person than them, and they're seeing you as somebody that they are indebted to. But when you are serving somebody, they don't see you as such. When you're serving to serve somebody, there's a feeling of gratitude. There's um. You, there's, a, there's a mutual feeling of healing between both of you two, before, or between you two when you're serving somebody, whereas when you're helping somebody, there's a feeling of satisfaction for you, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. No, that makes a lot of sense. And you kind of stepped on all mm -hmm. of 10 of my toes. No. Yes. When you, yes. you made the analogy of being the oldest, you know, I am uh -huh. the oldest mm -hmm. in my family and I am... Um, you know, there's an 18 year difference between uh, me and my baby sister. Now, my parents, I won't even talk about them. But again, <laughs> but they, you know, I was like, how was that supposed to happen? But anyway, but um, both my parents are deceased, but I am the oldest and I was always taught, and I'm the only boy and there's two girls. And so I was always taught, wow, you got to take care of your sisters, you got to look out mm -hmm. for them, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and because of the age difference, between me and my youngest sister, at one time she was looking like she had two fathers, you know, and my father was very <laughs> aged, and I was like, wait a time out, I'm your brother, I'm not your father. But, oh, that's right. So, and so, so again, I, so I understand that, you know, that, that you get caught in that, and then you get trapped. Um, and yes. so when you get mm -hmm. trapped, it's being able to, you know, we, we need skills on how to escape that, um, and so that we can mm -hmm. be, you know, we can level the playing field and, and, and have fun with our siblings or whoever that person is. <laughs> yes. So, uh -huh. so I'm going to let Gina ask the next question. But like I said, you stepped on all ten of my toes and that was good though. Because, you know, that, that's real. That's real. I, you know, and I'm sure our listeners out there, there's somebody out there who's the oldest who mm -hmm. said, yeah, that's me, that's yep. me. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. I think I want to ask it's you true. about... Uh, uh, journalism, journalism, journaling really is it? Is that important to self care? If you're writing, you know, oh yes, journaling, it. journaling is very important to self care. A lot mm -hmm. of times we struggle with um, expressing our feelings. I'm sorry, I moved it. Expressing our feelings and expressing our emotion. So when we get it on paper, or have the opportunity to get it on paper, we're able to look at it and see and say, you know what. I could have handled this better. Or you know what? Maybe I need to step away from this. Or maybe I need to handle this better. Maybe I should have said no. So when you journal, it's all about you um, getting your thoughts down on paper so that you can process your thoughts. Uh, it's all about you um, looking at issues that are unresolved because you get to analyze things. You know, maybe I'm acting this way because 
this happened in the past. So you know what? I've been, every time I'm journaling, I'm putting the same thing down. I'm noticing the pattern. It helps you to see things. Um, and it also helps you to validate yourself and not be so hard on yourself. So we as 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 therapists we always encourage our patients to to journal not just the the bad things but the good the bad and the ugly write everything down so you can kind of see what your patterns are or see what your triggers are for certain behaviors or notice um you know what coping skills are you using for for different behaviors so how you best improve those those coping skills or eliminate those triggers if that kind of makes sense yes it does very much and you know let me add this from a from a personal point of view, uh, as far as personal care is concerned, this is what I do every morning when I get up. No matter before I wash my face, before I comb my hair, I tell myself how smart and how beautiful I am. My children think I'm crazy, but I'm beautiful and I know I'm beautiful. So I tell myself that. So that's part of my self care. <laughs> yes, the Africa, uh, we call that positive Our affirmations. affirmations. And- Yes, positive yes. affirmation. It is good, so good that you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning and say, you know what? I yes. am worth it. Today is going to yes. be a good day. Today is going to be a yes. fantastic day. So that's all the yes. part, That's yes. all important to your own self-care. So that's very good that you do that. Yes. <laughs> so so that did. sounds like some of the examples for self, self-care. Can you tell us other types of self-care that our audience can practice? As in regards to... Um, uh, outside of journaling, that's what you're asking? yes mm-hmm. are there other ways that we can so, participate in self-care oh absolutely um making sure you get enough sleep um if you sleep in too much or too little that means something is wrong so making sure you get at least eight hours of sleep no less than six so six to eight hours of sleep is is, is normal uh, taking care of yourself by taking care of your your what you're eating what you put in inside of your body um, that's all about self-care, not eating too much sweets, exercise. And when you exercise, it increases dopamines in your brain. So making sure that you exercise, um, don't overindulge in food. Don't eat too much. Don't stop skipping meals. Those are also signs that you're not taking good care of yourself. Um, saying no, that's a huge one because we have a problem with telling people no. The world is not going to end because you told somebody no. They will figure it out and they will be okay. It is okay to say no or say, oh, you know what? I am sorry, but I'm not comfortable with doing that. Or right now, I can't give that energy to that right now because this is a little difficult for me. But it's okay to tell somebody no and set those boundaries. Take self-care trips. Take four-day weekends when you're by yourself in a hotel just doing nothing but watching TV or reading a book or whatever. Do, Do weekends by yourself. Take a trip by yourself. Uh, one of the things that we find that we we do or have a hard time doing either in the workplace or even in um, the church setting, delegating duties. You can't hold on to everything and do everything by yourself. You have to have a level of delegation and, and releasing stuff and saying, you know what, why don't you take care of this? You, you're very good with this or well, let so-and-so take care of this. They're very good with that. Um, I'm going to share a little something which you, um, that I found out how to take care of myself a long time ago. My father... A little story. My father used to be a district manager at AMP. I don't know if you guys know what AMP is. A long time ago, and I, my first management job, I was a manager at McDonald's. And I'm telling my age, I came home with a beeper one time, and I was because I was living in another state, and my beeper kept going off every 10, 10 to fifteen minutes. I'm calling the store, and my father just sat there and he looked at me and he said, "Um, did you let someone, uh, uh, is somebody else in charge where you're going? I said, no, dad, I, you know, I'm in charge, yada, yada, yada. I'm the store manager. But the, the beeper kept going on after five or 10 minutes. So he watched that for about an hour and he sat me down and he said, baby girl, I'm going to show you how to take care of yourself. You have to put your aces in their places, meaning those who are good at their job, train them and let them do it. Or either you need to start delegating things because if you keep going at this rate, you're going to be emotionally drained and you're going to hate your job within the next six uh, six months, six months to a year. He said, you have to learn to let people do their jobs and you have to delegate things and you have to put things in other people's hands and give them the power and authority to do those things. So that really hit home for me. And so ever since then, and that's been like 40, uh, about 35 years ago, I have been delegating a lot of stuff, even with the kids, um, knowing yourself and knowing your love language. You know, what would best satisfy you? Are you a person that needs somebody to do for you? Or do you need someone to talk to, you know, to talk to you? What are, What is your love language? Um, addressing unresolved issues is self-care. 
if you hold it on the grudges from your past, from what Big Mama did or somebody did to you, you're not taking care of yourself because you're holding stuff here and you're holding stuff here. So letting go of unresolved issues and talking that out with a therapist and having a, having a therapist to work that work with you through those things. Um, being aware of, of internalizing your negative self-talk. Sometimes we are internalized things that were said to us a long time ago. Um, I can't rem I remember um, the comedian, um, he was sharing how one of the teachers told him that he would never be nothing and in life and would never amount to nothing and he's a big time comedian right now and he was telling the story how he wished he could see her so he could tell her that she was wrong but he said as a kid and even as an adult he still repeat that over in his head right before he go on stage that a teacher told him he would never be anything so being aware of you internalizing your negative self -thought, thoughts and those voices that's in your head that people have already told you that's not true um journaling um like we just talked about and also the, the the, the primary thing that would help you with your self guide to self care, get a therapist. Please get a therapist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just because you get a therapist doesn't mean that you're crazy. And just because right, you get in right. a therapist doesn't mean that you're weak. Mm -hmm. Getting a therapist right. doesn't mean that you're not emotionally strong. Having a therapist is very, very, very good for you psychologically to have somebody to bounce something yeah. off. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, okay. this, very this good. has been that bit of information that you gave um, was such a great summation <laughs> for, <laughs> for our program today, Reverend Yolanda yeah. C. Stewart. It really was. I mean, and, and I think that everything that you said mm -hmm. was right. We um, obviously, yes. we could go on and go on, but you know, the voices inside of my ears saying, wrap it up. So we're going to <laughs> wrap it up. <laughs> Um, but again, we have been talking with uh, Reverend Yolanda Seal Stewart um, of the Alliant Behavioral Health LLC and the CEO of Project Growth Initiative. She's available on Facebook by going to Facebook, Alliant Behavioral Health LLC. Um, and again, uh, we would just want to thank you for so much for spending some time with the audience here for Ever Young because the information you shared with us today will not only keep us mentally sound, but it will also keep us forever young. On behalf of Gene Hendrick and Dr. Sharon Mitchell, I'm your host, David Linton. On behalf of our executive director, executive producer, uh, Dr. E. Dewey Smith Jr. and the entire Hope TV staff, we thank you for joining us. And remember, you are forever young because age ain't nothing but a number. Until the next time, be blessed. <laughs> we'll see you later. Bye now. Okay. Thank you. Bye.